is this um is this the graveyard slot? You know that thing where everyone's had their luncheons. We've had the excitement of this morning, and now uh, you've got me. Not in the biblical sense, obviously. Mm. Right. So, welcome. My name's Simon Finch, and I work for Northern Grid for Learning. Northern Grid for Learning is an RBC, regional broadband consortium, based in the northeast of England, and. Our core business is managing and procuring broadband for schools and we also provide e-learning services. I'm a member of the e-learning team and my remit is learning platforms, mobile technologies and e-safety. And I tend to do almost all e-safety uh, and hardly anything else, uh, or so it would seem. And I'm here this afternoon to talk about uh, how to lose your job, uh, which is a little tongue-in-cheek, but uh, hopefully it will be of some benefit to you and uh, came about because I did a teach meet uh, which was how to lose your job in seven minutes which lasted nine and then I recorded it and put it onto YouTube and I can't remember the address I think I'm called Sim Finn on YouTube but I might not be but if you did a Google for how to lose your job it would probably come up but if you email me I'll send you it and then you'll be able to use it and share it with your, your colleagues if that's what you'd like is that okay I'm already out of breath and I haven't started yet so uh, let's just see what we're going up with this and the first thing that we can do in terms of uh, laying out our, our sand, so to speak, is, is to understand the context of e-safety. So I've been doing this long enough to say, well, actually, as it's my session, I'm going to tell you what e-safety means in terms of your jobs. Uh, are we all teachers uh, working in school, adults who work with children? Is that right? And journalists? Yes. So I'm looking forward to seeing myself in the press a little later <laughs> with the animals. So. Uh, it's the students, it's about protecting the students uh, from ne'er-do-wells, from stranger danger, from uh, uh, people that want to do them harm, and that extends beyond uh, sex offenders, but it includes that. And it's about protecting them from each other, which is cyberbullying, for want of a better uh, dis description. It's not very helpful. Cyberbullying sounds a little exciting, like joyriding, and it, it doesn't really describe or, or do justice to the misery that it, it causes. And then in the middle, I've got hardware security. I would extend that through to uh, data protection as well. It's about how we actually uh, move around uh, data details about our, our youngsters, but also about our colleagues and about our organisation and about leaving memory sticks in pubs and those kinds of things. And then it's also about the, the teachers, the support staff, the adults who work with children. And what happens is, is that people will often come to this session and start with, how do I make sure that I protect uh, the children in my care? And it moves through to Blimey, how do I make sure that I look after myself and how do I look after my own family and my children? And so our, our perceptions change and that is part of our uh, online identity and management, I guess. And then we will underpin all of that with AUPs. Can you understand my accent? Yeah. I am sorry about this. I come from Middlesbrough and I live in Newcastle, so it's not, it's not really very... I'm impaired whichever way you want to look at it. And uh, you can all hear me. Sorry about that too. Um, Acceptable use policies and acceptable work on two ways. One is is that they need to be acceptable in as much as they allow us to protect our youngsters and ourselves, but that they also are acceptable and that they allow us to do our jobs effectively. And I do get a little weary of acceptable use policies that stop you doing your job properly. And I guess you're probably all in there as well. And then the next thing to say is is that for us, and it's probably much the same here, because uh, I am in a different country where they do things differently, um, the head is personally liable for the safety of the children and of the employees within the building. And personally liable is the bit that makes them all jump a little bit because that means they lose the house and the garden and the pension when it all goes a bit peak tongue and wrong. Okay? And the way that they are personally responsible is uh, uh, health and safety at work and the Education Act and the devolvement of the budget to them personally. Mm -hmm. Are we all right with that then? So, what would possess anybody to come to a workshop on how to lose your job? I mean, just <laughs> it, why are you here? So, the, our. This is also, what you're seeing is a bit of an uh, amalgamation of lots of other kind of things that I do. And some of these slides were in this morning when I was looking at uh, e-safety and uh, learners with special and additional needs and so on. And I also do a unit uh, which is working quite well with school leavers, which is kind of saying, and I like the tone that, they, they, uh, that came out of the beginning of the conference, which is we are where we are. Now let's see if we can do something positive with it. And so for school leavers, whether they are 16-year-olds going into work or whether they are 18-year-olds going into college, how can we say, well, all right, all right, you've got your online management, uh, you've got your online identity, how can we manage that? And so one of the things I ask them is, uh, and I will ask you, is normal always right? What is normal? What is normal behavior? And you know, if you don't answer, it's gonna be a long session. 
because I, I know the answers and I know what's on the slide, so I'm, I don't need to see them again. What is normal behaviour? Do you want to help me out here? I'm not averse to hidden people. <laughs> All right? Accepted. Accepted, right, let's go, come on. I would say there isn't a wrong answer, but there are wrong answers, and I will laugh at you. It's not helpful. Average. Say that again? Average. Average, yeah, we can put that in there. Let's, let, let me move you on then. This is like bad. Yes, Louise? Uniform. Uniform? Yeah. Uniform. Yeah. Um, normal is <coughs> social conventions of a lot, the majority of people. Social conventions of the majority of the people. So now we're starting to get a sense of this. Now I've identified that we've got a top table. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and you can infer from that <laughs> where we're up to. Normal is what everybody else does, thank you. So then we have to say, is being normal right? So we can have a little look where we put the laptop somewhere. So we've now got some uh, little adverts from, from Dave come by, so as your dentist I would recommend a uh, So this is normal, we'll have a little titter about it, so that's absolutely conceivable. We can take that further. Christmas morning should be happier with a Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It works better when there's just men in the room, but you know what? <laughs> and look at the reading a little gap gift tag down there. This, this is and this is a beauty, isn't it? Seven to seventeen. We've got a gun for everybody, fun for all the family. And so we can then move on to uh, our online existence and our identity. So you can kind of nod and say, "Yeah," as we move through. That would be me doing uh, that. I was an English drama and dance teacher, which is nice. <laughs> Thank you. So. Uh, so, Skype, uh, speaking on phones, uh, texting, email, you are a chatty bunch. Uh, Amazon, the interesting thing about Amazon then is that you did have a dialogue with the supplier when your stuff didn't come through at Christmas, isn't that right? And you have a decision then about what you can say, which is what I did, which is, uh, I'm really very sorry to trouble you because I'm going to be very busy at this time of year, but my daughter's present hasn't arrived yet, and if there's anything I can do to help it get to me, is there anything, you know, I don't want too much trouble. That got a response. What I could have done was, I've, this is a disgrace, call yourself a company. I have a profile there and they will remember me. Is that right? I have, I have an identity. Similarly with Facebook. Uh -huh. Now the good thing is, and you're going to like this, who's got a Facebook account? Yeah. And I had a register, so I got some screen dumps of some Facebook accounts of the people who come in here today, which is nice. If you want to have a break to go and delete some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. eBay, we have conversations in eBay. What I like about eBay is that it's the absolute inverse of Facebook in that on eBay, people are very polite. Prompt turn up to this, to this workshop. Prompt delivery, excellent seller. It's all this lovely stuff and we should, you should do a day of talking like eBay. <laughs> nice walk, good pen. <laughs> Whereas in Facebook, it is a competition to be as negative as possible. So, and then Bluetooth. Yeah, we do use Bluetooth. We'll have a little look at that later. Flickr, there's conversation. Some spooky person from across the world says, I favorited your picture. And say, how did that happen? Can you hear me all of this? And then we've got Xbox Live. So we can be gaming. And we would see that some of our colleagues will be gamers. You know, there's that whole thing about the average age of online gamers is males and they're 35 and all of that sort of stuff. Our colleagues will be doing those things and they'll be interacting and telling other people that they are crap and they're rubbish and all that sort of stuff. And then we've got blogging. Anybody write a blog? Yeah. yeah, so we've got that thing. And we've got YouTube where there's comments. You know, as soon as you put a video up, then people start commenting. Twitter, anyone on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, I'm Sim Flynn. You probably knew that. It looked like that. So it's about as tall as this. A little taller than that. And then speaking, listening, reading, writing. So we can say then that we are complex people. And we need to manage those things if we're going to keep our jobs. And so let's do a little kind of test for us then. So we're assuming that you kind of sort of work in the school thing, a learner or a client, depending on what we're talking, uh, ask for advice about webcams and they were wondering which one to buy. How do you respond? So here we go. Why do you want one? Thank you, sir. What do you why say? Do you want yeah, why do you want one? Right, so that's our response to our group. Why do you want one? Next. Don't, Don't bother, they're the tool of Satan. <laughs> and the ones on special. Whichever one's on special, what I can say is I do this all the time, and it's the same answers, and the same answers will be, you shouldn't have one, e-safety, I'm at the e-safety conference, you always kind of get that thing coming in there. Uh, the other one is, oh, you want it, the Optrex 1999, you can get a comment, I've got it, it's a blinder. And the other one is, I don't do technology, it scares the bejesus out of me, no idea. So our question then will be to say, well, how do you respond? So the interesting bit is, let's assume that I work in your school, your school, Green School, and I'm Simon Finch, and a pupil comes up to me, or a parent comes up to me, and they say, let's, 
I want to buy a, a, a webcam, and I say the Optrex 1999, that's the one you want to get, and they get one, and then they're groomed, and they die, and a bad thing happens, and it's going to come back and say, well, Simon Finch said we should buy it. And everyone's going to turn around and say, hang on a minute, what's that then? How come that school is brought into disrepute? Because what we can say is, is that bad things happen when we're using webcams, and can do. It's also a great tool. One of the things we've talked about this morning, of course, is, is that if you're, if you're deaf, then a, a, a webcam is an absolutely fantastic tool. But what we need to do is to have some kind of policy, to have some kind of understanding that I was a secondary teacher, so we had about 80 members of staff. No matter which member of those 80 people you asked, you'll get the same answer. Now, you can have a policy that says, we do not give out advice or guidance, and there's a difference between the two, on technology that might put our children at risk. That might be one of the things you do. One of the things you might do is just to say, well, actually, we're going to pull together some information about webcams, and we're going to put it on our website. So no matter who they ask, whether they ask the teacher who's 60 or the teacher who's 24, they'll say, well, have a look on our website, because there's some guidance on webcams. Is that all right? Consistency of delivery of message is what we're hoping for from our colleagues to make sure that we don't bring themselves into trouble, the organisation into trouble, and the profession as a wider thing. And before I look too smug about this, I'd like to share this slide, which is an email that I got uh, two years ago. And because I was responsible for learning platforms across our seven local authorities, which is about 470 schools, I got an email that says, I forgot my password and the admin name for a primary school. Can you please send it to me? I want to move the children up. Now, for anybody who uses learning platforms, yeah, then you'll know that when the kids are in year six, when it gets to the summer, you've got to move them on the platform to year seven. So that they, and it's quite a complicated thing. And I get teachers looking at me kind of vacant when I say, you will have to move them physically. So that's quite a difficult thing. I could have given them the password. Protocol says the local authority should do it. So I get in touch with Neil Pell, who's the guy down in Middlesbrough, give it two hours, and he comes back again and says, the lad that sent you that email is eight or nine years old. He goes to a special school, and the headset is in trouble before for pretending to be someone older on Facebook. So Simon Finch, the great guru, the great god, if I may say, of East Age, who was almost outwitted by a lad at a special school who was less than 10. So one of the things that we can say is, is that when you are working with email, and we know how busy your lives are, whatever communication you get, you'd have to be mindful that perhaps it was a child. Or some people say, well, you can see that that wasn't the punctuation of a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> And so what we have then is Ashley Orr, who was uh, murdered by a, a, a paedophile, a sex uh, predator, in Darlington, which is one of our partner local authorities, brought home to us what I've been saying for six years, until a bad thing happens, nobody sits up. We've been going on and on and on about all the, you know, we've had all the CF training, all the bad things that could happen. Until it happens on your doorstep, nobody listens. And you can see, actually, when you're looking at child protection, that the law changes every time uh, a, a child dies. That's really, you can map the law change and when a, a child has died. And so Ashley died, and it was, it was terrible for all of us and for my colleagues that I work so closely with, that they had to, to work with the schools and want to work with the schools. And great things came out of Ashley's death. Is the local paper became involved, there was a very proactive reporter, and uh, a, a, a video company came together, and the, and the students that were... Uh, Ashley's peers made a video where they scripted it themselves and it's a great resource and I recommend that you should go and get it. It's called Choices and get it from Darlington, LA. If you email me, I'll tell you how to get it. It's about £47 to cover the cost to get the thing and it is fantastic. Um, and then uh, the students at the college also came up with Ashley's Rules where they put a wall, a virtual wall on the learning platform and all the students kind of came up and talked to other strangers, never go to meet someone alone, those kind of things. And other colleges across the country have taken those. So we can say that's absolutely fantastic. What a pity they didn't have that kind of enthusiasm. Because inevitably, what happens when a bad thing happens is, is that we look introspectively and say, well, who was the last person to support Ashley? Now, was it me? Was it the teachers? Was it the school? And of course, the head teacher has to come out and make this statement and say, this is how good Ashley was. Well, what did you do to support her? What preparation did you do? Where can we say that we did everything that we could to manage that risk? So then that takes us to Facebook. And as, as, as Josie mentioned this morning, <coughs> is that if you look at 550 million people, that is a country. It's a country full of plumbers and, and carpenters and doctors and nurses and pop stars and teenagers and villains and criminals and murderers. They are all on there. And it is normal to be on there. So our kids will see it as normal and our colleagues will see it as normal. 
but we don't necessarily know that normal behavior is what's going to keep our job. What we'll do is we'll have a little look at this video here. Now, we looked at it this morning, but we'll look at it now. And this hey, Sarah. Oh, Archie, don't do it. But do it like a cartoon. I believe that too, Sarah. 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 16 year old and so they have actually grown up through this digital revolution of so I've had all of those challenges and one of the challenges that you have with teenage daughters or teenage girls is, is that as they turn into young women they want to show off their bits and bobs is that all right is that a phrase I can use after lunch they kind of and all that stuff where boys put the hoods up just so that you know what's the difference um, do this that and <laughs> So we can say that's what that's directed at. And, and I missed the beat, really, with this, which is that I would be telling my kids, if you post those pictures of you online with your whole bits and bobs showing, you know, just uh, not naked, but just inappropriate images and so on, then somebody in Russia or South America might take those pictures and put them on their wall. And how would you feel about that? And they really, they don't care, why would they? But actually, the, the, the narrative there is, is your locality, is your, is your neighbourhood, it's the, it's the fella on the bus, it's the fella in the chip shop, it's the lady, because let's remember this is not gender specific, it's the kid in your class, it's the uncle, it's the brother. Really kind of alarming to hear my own kids say, oh no, you never go around there if it's just the dad with you. And they just see these things as normal stuff, or is it the uncle's there, the big brother's like, no, you don't go around. I say, why not? It's a dad, don't ask. It's just, you know, they walk among us people that are not necessarily the right people, and they could be taking all of these pictures. But let's I just move that out a little bit. It's a fantastic message for our idiot teacher colleagues. Whatever you post <coughs> online, all the people that are in your peripheral kind of community thing, the kids in your class, the parents, give me a pound for every time a parent says they found something about a teacher online, whether it's on Facebook or somewhere else, and they're not happy about it. We'll look at that a bit later. So, it's really quite a useful video in that sense. Where does this take us to? It takes us to this here. Have you seen this? This is fantastic. I need my glasses, so I am I going too quickly? I know I've got another 72 slides, you see, so I am panicking <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, very quickly, I'm not great on charts. This is the default settings for a, a new Facebook account in 2005. So, six years ago now. And uh, in the middle is you, then you've got friends, then you've got network, then you've got all Facebook, and the outside circle is the entire internet. So it's worth kind of paying attention to that. Do you think we're going to get more or less blue as we kind of move through this? More. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Blue from the last hour's We get them. You don't have to go through each one. You don't need me. So that's 2010. You should be kind of going, <gasps> yes, quite. Particularly if you put your hand up with one instead of having a Facebook account. We will also have a discussion about setting your privacy settings and what a waste of time that is, but we'll, we'll park that for a moment. And we can see that the outside circle means that if you did nothing else, people would see your gender, your picture, your name, your likes, your photos, and your walls, and networks. Anybody on the internet would see that stuff. Facebook is the enemy for a different reason than the ones we talk about, actually. I, I object to it on a level of it's a commercial company that is using our personal data and it and making money from it and has, has got a very cavalier attitude, not necessarily about the danger that it puts us or our children in. So our next bit then is, is when we're talking about normal, one of the things, I'm really pleased there is, you know, if you want to do a proper conference, you should send all of the presentations to all of the speakers weeks before so that there is, you know, so that there's not that kind of concept. I'm rather pleased that this is all worked out all right. Let's have a look at this. Amy's boxy. <laughs> Come on! 
So what we can then say is, is that those are the most popular videos. They've got over a million views. They've got over a million views by adults. What is normal is for adults to ridicule and to humiliate. And we can say there's two parts to this. One part is, is the talent and the, what my dad would call trick photography that you saw there. So there's those kind of things. And then you've also got posting of fat kids, of unfortunate people, of hapless people. And of our own children, the child that's sitting in the back of the car, you know the backstory of that, is that he'd, he'd been to the dentist, he was under the influence of anaesthetic. So you've got a child that is, is bewildered and is confused and, and is out of sorts in the back of your car, and your first thought is, I'm going to get that on YouTube. And how do you get it back off YouTube? And how do you make sure that that child doesn't then live the rest of their life like Charlie? How's Charlie going to go to class? How's he going to go to secondary class? How's he going to get his new job? With people like me saying, oh, that'll be Charlie, put your hands in your pocket, he'll have your fingers off for the rest of his life. So it's our colleagues that are all passing on these videos. And we need to make a stand on it and say, actually, just because it was normal to do this, perhaps we have to like, take a view and say that it's not decent behavior. This anonymity, not knowing your name, is causing us to behave in a very kind of Lord of the Flies fashion. And so you see that uh, directgov.uk uh, did have uh, really quite a useful uh, anti-bullying campaign which was about laugh at it and you're part of it so the question is is how many of our colleagues when kids come up with mobile phones and see any of those clips stand next to them and say yeah that's very funny give us a copy of that and pass them on to their own friends we need to make sure that what we're doing is modeling the best of behavior in the same way as whether we smoke or whether we drink in the olden days when kids were demonstrating those things we'd say you shouldn't be doing that that's not good for you. We have to rise above as a profession and say, actually, we're going to model better behavior. Because it's only by modeling better behavior and appropriate behavior that kids who have been born to this and have seen all of this stuff as normal will change their behavior. But what I see is, is that our colleagues say, actually, I don't see what the problem is. Until we get to this, in one of my sessions, someone came up to me afterwards. A man came up afterwards. He says, I'm going to stop laughing. I said, all right. He said, no, what I mean is, is I'll still find it funny at home, but in front of the kids, in front of my colleagues, I will be able to put on that face and say, that's not funny, that's not appropriate. Now, at the moment, we've had this free-for-all where our colleagues are able to say, actually, I'm all part of this. It is a complex place for us to be, but it is a difficult place, and it's a place that will bring our own organisation into disrepute if it becomes part of the media, for example. So then we then get onto this bit here. Did you see this story, which was the Google bosses and uh, the, the the lad with special needs uh, was was being ridiculed and videoed? And what happened was, was the Italian courts took the Google executives, the suits, 
to court and said it's your responsibility and they were held to be responsible and Google of course with a, le a legend of do no evil said hang on a minute it's nothing to do with us we merely host the stuff but the court took a different view now why does that impact on you pause Yeah, whatever you've got in your systems, you will be held responsible for. Whatever your colleagues put on there, whatever the kids put on there. And saying we didn't know what was on our systems, what was on our learning platform, what was on our network, what was in our shared area, isn't an excuse. There's plenty of software and, and tools to tell you what's on your systems. But it's actually not about nailing that bit down, but it's about making people not want to put that stuff there in the first place. I talk a lot about how I worked in the challenging school in the centre of Newcastle. It was a very challenging school and I loved every minute of it, more or less. And those kids there didn't start lighting cigarettes up in my class, didn't break windows, never hit me when they were all capable of doing that. They each made a decision, like my dog makes a decision about whether it's going to come to me or run off after another dog. They made a decision every day that they weren't going to do that stuff. And we need to get to a stage where our colleagues make that decision or where our kids make that decision. And somebody has to start by modelling it. So, and so we get to this bit here. <laughs> Have you seen that before? Teacher, patch pulled out, Google it, it's great. It's very, very funny. Every time there's a BBC News story about uh, bullying of adults, bullying of teachers by parents, by kids, they show that clip pretty much. It must have happened five years ago. And the poor soul, while his trousers pulled down, is up there every, every time. So the question is, what's your policy for support? I spent a lot of time having to go and, and try and sort things, things out. Last year I got a phone call saying, one of our heads of year in our secondary school put two fingers up at some pupils and she's on YouTube doing it. That's the, that's the bit I get. What we then find out is, as I go in, and, and can I remove the video is the thing. And you try and remove a video from YouTube because it's a right carry on. It's a real challenge to get stuff off. They're asking, why did the form says, why didn't you talk to the person who posted and ask them to remove it? Yeah, now that's going to happen. And what had happened was she was on the metro, which is our like kind of bus train thing that goes around the Newcastle area. And it was nine o'clock at night. She was there in her wash clothes and all that stuff. She's in profile, bad lads are over this side and they're saying are you pissed miss, are you pissed miss, are you pissed, are you pissed miss, are you drunk miss, are you pissed, and it goes on and on for minutes and minutes and she sits like this you can see the tears coming down the face and so you're going to wait for the camera and she did that and put two fingers up. The school were fantastically supportive and said you know look, we've got to go and find these kids and this is this is understandable that that should happen. Where is our policy to support that member of staff so they don't lose their job and they don't end up in the papers where teacher puts trees up and keeps her job? If you're not prepared for that, let's put it another way and say, to what do you attribute the fact that I'm not showing a video of you at this moment in time? Has anybody been happy slapped? Has anyone here been happy slapped? Has anybody on YouTube been humiliated? That's because you're clever, right, is it? Why aren't you on YouTube? It's because you're lucky. It will happen, and it will happen with increasing frequency. And this is the, the kind of dichotomy, the dilemma mm -hmm. that I have, which is let's get mobile devices in kids' hands. And the other one is, is if we do, there'll be video and all kinds of inappropriate things of what we're doing. And I know that, that there is a mismatch there, which is why we have to model and uh, modify behaviours. And cyberbullying is a crime, and we need to keep, to keep this fixed in our minds. It is a real crime, it is harassment, and it is assault. And what you need to do is, is to report it, whether it's cyberbullying of adults or whether it's cyberbullying of kids, so that when it gets to the end of the year and the police are looking at their statistics, they're going to say, blimey, we've got a 500% increase in reporting of cyberbullying. I don't care whether they turn up at the school. I want that statistic to be there so people realise that it's a real thing. And what I can say to cheer you up is, is that when I've reported it to the police as part of our work, they've been absolutely fantastically supportive. But it's going to take a while for everyone to understand that normal behaviour, and let's just kind of rewind a little bit. When I was at school, there was one black lad in my school, and the teachers and the kids all called him Chalky, because that's what you did. And comedians on, on, on television told jokes about Chalky, that's right, and you wouldn't entertain that now. That normality has changed and shifted, and rightly so. And that's what we need to do in terms of 
thinking that it is normal to humiliate people on the interweb. As if life wasn't hard enough, we then get to this stage here, which is that Ed Balls is happily telling us that we need to be mindful and uh, vigilant for uh, extremism. And the extremism, did you all read the extremism toolkit? If you've not read it, I'll tell you what it says. It says, if you see any, stop it. <laughs> it's thicker than that, but that's the gist. So then we then get to a stage where when the kids are on your systems, on your computers, and they are being groomed for political or religious or cultural or scam kind of um, opportunities, drug related, it's going to come back and it's going to say, well, who was the teacher in the classroom at the time? Who protected that child? Who was the person who allowed that to go on? So you need to be in a position where you try to make sure that you manage the risk to the best of your ability, which is all that we can do, to make sure we can stand up and say, we did everything that could be expected of us. I talk a lot about school visits. When I first started teaching, I was a young man, and they pretty much looked at me and said, are you male? Yes, more or less. Are you single? Yes, more or less. Can you drive? Yes. In that case, you can take that big minibus of those kids over to the Lake District and you'll take rock climbing, you'll, there's a piece of paper waiting for me in the centre, it said rock climbing Monday and it said swimming Tuesday and it said fell walking Wednesday, go play in the cracks, all the stuff where kids die and get into serious trouble, with no training, what we found was, was that what we needed to do, as everybody did, was actually to get policies in place to manage that risk to the best of our ability. We still take kids to dangerous places, don't we? We still take them skiing, we take them on, on visits. But we then get to this kind of new challenge, which is how, who can Bluetooth their students in your care when you're on visits? Who doesn't know what Bluetooth is? Well, that's a pity, because I've got a great definition. It's black magic. That's my best answer. It's black magic. It's <coughs> weird. You send stuff to each other. So you've got all other kids. You've gone to that kind of theme park. You've gone to that castle. You've gone to that place. And they're all lining up while you wait for the other teacher to come with the other bits. And there's general public over there. And you line them against that wall, don't you? You say, stand there and just wait. And if any Joe public comes over, you go, all right, what's happening? School trip. What are you doing? Isn't that what you're doing? Pretty much. Because you can see strangers approaching. How do you see strangers approaching by Bluetooth? One of the challenges we have then is <coughs> to tell kids that Little Miss Chatterbox isn't an anonymous name. If you've got four builders lined up at a bus stop and a girl in pigtails, I think you can work out who Little Miss Chatterbox is, unless it's a private. Give or take, not that way. So, and then we get our Sparkle Box thing as well. Are you all familiar with Sparkle Box? Sparkle Box was a fantastic website, as far as I can <coughs> tell. Lots of teachers wanted to use it. Lots of resources for teachers, and it was being run by uh, a, a convicted uh, child abuser, sex offender. That was, that was the case. So that takes us to a, a really uh, interesting and challenging place, which is that you know here we are, the great evangelists of ICT, and we're saying, burn your books. Let's all get in the interweb and we'll have these fantastic technology-based lessons mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. You know, the author of a book can't reach out to the kids and have a dialogue with them. The author of a website can do that, though. So you need to do some kind of due diligence <coughs> whilst keeping a level head and knowing that, you know, perhaps you need to sleep sometimes. So that when you are sending kids to websites, you're not going to be the only person who's found this fantastic website, which in fact turns out to be a paedophile ring or some drug ring or some whatever that bad thing it is. And you'll stand on your lonesome saying, well, I thought it was a good site. We need to make sure that we have a consistency of delivery across all of our organisations. And then we get to passwords. This is really interesting. The number of kids that know teachers' passwords. How many people here know somebody else's password? Well, I. Now, the interesting bit of it is, and I, this was logged out. This was logged out when I was going off for me lunch and all that I work on a floor with hardly any bigger than this, where there's like about eight of us. If I go downstairs to the kitchen, if I go down for a wee, I'll log out. Why do I log out on my computer? In case somebody else is using it. What's the, what's the challenge? They do something and it's your responsibility. They do something and it's my responsibility. That's really quite a, you know, yes, that is one possibility. I'm a little more magnanimous than that, though, because it works a little more complicated. Certainly, it's logged in as Simon Finch so that anything that happens on that computer comes to my name, yeah? So if you go on there and you start looking for puppies and all whatever it is that you're looking for, then, 
Then it's going to come to about Simon Dot Finch. But here's the thing. Supposing I'm the person who's doing the bad stuff. If I'm doing the thing that's the bad stuff, and the police come in and they say, who had access to that machine? They would all have to put their hands up. Because they had access to it. They weren't necessarily on it. If you share passwords when the bad thing happens, the police are going to say, who had access to that account? And you're all going to have to put your hands up like Muppets. So when you've got admin, and you've got like 14 people all log in as that thing, where somebody can't remember their password and say, can I log in as you? No. And it's about protecting each other. It's not just that one-way thing that somebody might come onto my account. And that then takes us to a really interesting place. We can then say, your password is yours. Sometimes I have a toothbrush, sometimes I have iPhones. It's yours, you don't share it. <laughs> I thought we'd have toothbrush today. So the other can be distracted. <coughs> so then we get this kind of thing here, which is that what you've done is, is that you've been using the interweb and you found this fantastic resource for geography and volcanoes and all that sort of stuff. It's a great, great website. And so and it's got a PowerPoint on that one <coughs> in the Rookin Volcano. And so you then send it out by the learning platform to all of your year, whatever it is. So let's say you've got 100 people in the year, or you've got 200 people in the year, and there's a virus within it. So a parent phones up and says, I've got a virus on my computer. And it's your fault. And so the school says, well, who did that? Well, that was Simon Finch, the geography teacher. Well, that's going to cost us £100. And then there's a slowly dawning. How many people did you send it to? And in fact, it might go right beyond. You might be sharing with other schools. So suddenly, I'm the person who's getting the blame for it. Well, in fact, we could have managed that risk quite easily, which is that we've got virus protection on our systems at school. We might even have a policy that says you don't just bum links out without checking, having due diligence about the, the site before you send it to all of the kids. You might check it with a colleague, you might have something else in your policy that takes you through that. And then you also tell the parents that before you download anything off our website, make sure that you've got virus protection that is adequate on yours, because we will accept no liability for stuff that you download. Because it's a bit like restaurants and poisoning food. We don't really know they got the virus from us as opposed to anywhere else. They could have been anywhere that night, couldn't they? So that is a place, then, that we need to say, well, we're also going to manage that risk. And then what we do is, in terms of trying to protect our kids, we've been in a primary school where we had naked Hindu dancers. I know. Who here thinks it's great to give kids an activity to search on the interweb in lesson time? Search on Google, see what you find. You think it's a great idea, get out. <laughs> Top table, bottom table, that's all I'm saying. It's an absolute waste of time. This is my workshop, so I'll tell you what I think, and you can kind of take, your, take your call on it. Is that when I was an English teacher, we used to have a library project, and we'd take the kids down one, one lesson a week for six weeks, and they would uh, choose a book and a theme, and they'd do a project on it. And after six weeks, kids were still looking at gymnasts, because that was nearest we got to naked. <laughs> and maybe some racing cars and a picture of Alan Shearer or something, and that was, that was it, that's as far as we'd got. If you give the kids the entire library, they will look at the entire library. If we're doing volcanoes, give them six books on volcanoes and give them extra marks if when they go home or in their own time they find a special website on, on volcanoes. The most precious resource in the school, in the classroom, is you. Without any doubt, because they can do all the other stuff without you, so that bit is there. So what we had was a teacher, interactive whiteboard, tells the kid, you can sit on my computer, and we're doing Hindu, so you see if you can find some Hindu stuff, and naked Hindu dancers came up in the classroom. And so all the kids went home, and they told the mums, and all the mums came in and said, what are you doing with porn? You're always having porn in your lessons. <laughs> naked Hindu porn as well, which is worse. <laughs> Surely what we want to be doing then is saying, actually, and I'm, I find myself confused why I'm arguing with myself about this, is I am a bit of an advocate for filtering. Even though I'm a bit laissez-faire and wishy-washy and, you know, we should, just, we should have the skills and we should have our own self-controls and so on. Because it safeguards the learners. It manages that risk in a sense. As long as you've got responsive filtering, you get the sites you want to go to, then it safeguards them. It stops us getting bad people coming into the best of our ability. It enables effective teaching and learning. They can only go to worthwhile sites. They can play on the internet some other time. Right, and then down here it protects the infrastructure. There's no point me being able to have carte, uh, carte blanche on it and then getting viruses and all the machines come down so the next poor soldiers coming into the ICT suite can't use the computers. So it's about a management thing there. Although I can't say I'm exactly happy about it, we do have to manage our teaching. That's what we want to do. We can't all be um, dead poets society and so on. And so our policies need to go across all areas of our work and our policies need to allow us to do our job effectively. So we embed our e-safety across all of those areas to protect ourselves as well as to protect the kids. To protect ourselves from that dialogue, which might mean that we're going to lose our job, and from viruses, and from inappropriate contact, and so on. 
So here we go. It looks better. Actually, the screen's a bit higher. It always looks better if I stand in the middle. Sort of warming ears thing. So, protecting the adults, is that acceptable? Is it acceptable if I have it as my screensaver and I'm a colleague in your school? No. No. Why not? Oh, right. Yeah. So you're building on what I've already told you. Yes. Would it have been acceptable yesterday? What is it? Is it porn? I'm a bit confused by porn now. I have to say, I'm not entirely. Sad. I can't say I was ever an expert. But now, if you go into Smiths, if you go into a news agent, and there's Nuts magazine, and there's, uh, there's FHM, which is what that's now at all, and there's more nakedity there than you'd have ever seen after the watershed or down mm -hmm. Soho in the 60s and 70s. There is a blurring of them. We're talking about the sexualization of children. And that there is an advert for a magazine, isn't it? So perhaps an art class might say, well, actually, have a look at this clever paintwork. How did they do the shading to make the wings so rounded in the car? What we need to do is, is to tell our college, because that's the sort of thing that people send around by phone, by email, by mobile phone, isn't it? Yes, it is. Look at this. Isn't this funny? We need to be able to tell our colleagues that that does not go to your work email. We don't want Simon to suddenly discover that, am I the only one who's having this sort of stuff on my work computer? Getting teachers to understand that when a computer goes home, it's still a school computer. And what you do on the internet on that computer at home is the same as what you'd have done if you'd done it in the head's office. Is that right? And I think we forget that stuff. And it's very, very difficult when we've got teenage kids who've got assignments to do for their exams and we've got a newer version of Office, that we say, oh, yeah, you use my work laptop, that'll be all right. That'll be okay. And then they're off on MSN, and they're off on Facebook, and then some inappropriate thing happens, and it comes rolling back again, and it was Simon Finch who was using school equipment for that bad thing to happen. So we need to make sure that we've got some kind of policy and understanding that allows us to do our job properly, and that takes us through to, is it acceptable? Have you got a policy on uh, mobile cameras <coughs> and stuff? teachers? Teachers' personal devices, have you? So does your policy say that you're not allowed to use personal devices to take pictures of kids? Does it? Am I supposed to cheer? <coughs> you should have a policy that allows you to do your job properly. Now, if your school has given everyone a, 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 a digital camera to take pictures of kids, and they've all got batteries in, and they're all like permanent, and you've, got, you've all got a personal technician, what's more likely is, is that there's a camera down the corridor and you know it's going to be flat and somebody's lost the battery and hasn't got a charger and all that stuff. Now if you've got a child that is doing the magic thing that you've all been waiting for, you've got a relationship with the parent and they've not done any of that stuff and then suddenly it's happening and you need it, it's the last day for the assignment, for the evidence, for the coursework, whatever it is, whatever your important job is, why can't I use my phone to take a picture of them and then I've got a policy that says under no circumstances must I ever take that phone home again, I must go to the head teacher, I must fill in my e-safety book, because you've got an e-safety book in your school, haven't you? where you record incidents, you have got that, right? Where you want to get one of those, in the same way that, you know, if you catch a kid with your elbows, you walk past and then they say, you hit me, you just want to log it in there and just say, you know, that we're managing that risk. And so I can take that picture and then I then go to head of IT and I go to the deputy head who's in charge of pastoral and all that sort of stuff and they say, all right, let's have that picture, that's a great picture, that's exactly what we need for that child, well done, we'll phone the parent and we'll tell the parent, we'll send a letter home saying, we took a picture with a personal device and this is the reason, whatever it is, if it allows you to do your job properly, don't have policies that stop you doing your job properly, but do have policies that stop you losing your job. So, is that all right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's confusing, isn't it? And then the next bit is, who does the monitoring of your systems? You do need to speak, because it's after quarter past, and I move quicker when you give me an answer. Who monitors your systems? Come on, chop, chop. IT. IT, IT do. Right then, Terry the technician. Hmm. Terry the technician, for want of a better expression. Now, great people, salt the earth, I won't have a word said against them, are there any here? <laughs> That's not really the point. The point is, is that they are probably monitoring the system. So what happens if, if Simon Finch has got that picture of that mini? Does Terry the technician say, oh my God, that's a bit inappropriate. I'm getting myself off to the end with it. I'm going to look what that Mr. Finch has got. If a complaint is made, I'll be suspended straight away while there's an investigation. Is that right? So then say, teacher of school suspended, inappropriate content content on his personal computer. That's what's going to happen. No smoke without fire. I will always be, for the rest of my life, that teacher who was. Even if at the other end they turn it around and say, you know, there's nothing this time. 
Alternatively, what happens if I've been working with Terry for 10 years and we play five aside every Friday and there are pictures of child abuse in my area? How's Terry going to be able to deal with that? What training has Terry had for that really traumatic thing? So what we need to do is, is to say that actually the monitoring does need to go through the pastoral system of the school. It needs to be there to protect Terry, it needs to be there to protect us against false accusation and you need to have those routines in place. It's all right. It's more complicated than the Coral Fellow is going to have a look at the computers every now and then. Oh yeah, who's that? So then it's about how we as teachers present ourselves. If you Google, I would do this as a practical thing, if we don't have computers here, yeah, I'd say Google Simon Finch. And you'd, you'd get a couple of pictures like that. You'd also see that Simon Finch writes uh, gay fantasy porn, which is nice, but that's not me. Shame, but then the fact is part of it. Um, and so that then, is that, uh, if I applied for a job in your school and that was the thing that found, is that sort of a positive image? Help me here. <coughs> yeah, if you wanted some get who waves his arms around and tells teachers off and makes them feel uncomfortable, then probably your man. So, this is a picture I must never let anybody see. Oh. <laughs> and the so there I am, the mean motorcycling, wild hogs thing, eat babies, you know, that sort of thing. There are lots of pictures of me riding motorbikes and being on motorbike festivals and all of that sort of stuff. Can you find them on the internet? Well, you might do eventually. You won't find them, though, and you won't find them because the people that I move around with don't tag me, don't label me, don't use my name, and they'd actually already worked it out. Motorcyclists, they say they're like bank robbers to bank managers. You get that, like fishermen. It's the full spectrum of, of all kinds of people. You know, the full, the full business. And they worked out long before I ever said anything to them. You work with kids, I can't show you that. So whenever they're showing inappropriate videos to each other of whatever it is they're showing, and I say, what are you laughing at? So we didn't send it to you. It's interesting that, I mean, because not necessarily do our colleagues uh, see that. So then we get over here. And these are profile pictures of... Uh, late teens, 16, 17 year olds. And the interesting thing is, is which is the one that if I had a job to give on, on Saturday, which is the one that I would give? Shall we say the one in the suit? <laughs> Alright, let's do the one in the suit. God knows what he was thinking, I'm in a suit. Hey, I'm the guy. <laughs> the other though, we could say actually, you know, maybe we don't want the wine, maybe we don't need the two fingers, don't know what's happening with the hairy legs. Profile pictures, give us a view on people. I can actually, when I am searching through teachers' sites, and remember that I don't hack anything, all I do is, is, is log in as a Facebook user and find teacher sites. Um, I know you're not listening to me because you're trying to work out if it's a hand or not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're trying to work out whether it's a hand or, or not. Um, what was I saying? You didn't hack. You didn't hack any teachers' websites. Yes, I didn't, and they're just there. And I can tell by a profile picture whether there's going to be anything juicy there before I move in. It really is. You can just kind of like get them into a cluster of which ones are going to have inappropriate pictures. And so then you get guilt by association. I asked my sprog, "Have you got any inappropriate pictures on uh, your friend's Facebook accounts that you can show me?" That was the only one I could show you. <laughs> that was a party where they said, "Let's get naked," and they did. And that's when they were 14. My sprog didn't go to it, but it's appearing in her profile because those pictures have been shared. So, where does that take us to? And then when we're talking about um, how we behave online, unless we can model appropriate behaviour, we can't expect youngsters to behave any better. And this is what we see adults doing all the time. So Master Spencer's column, Cheap Little Bastards, Brave British Airways, Staff Course, and overall work on smelly and annoying, and Virgin Atlantic, uh, describing passengers as chaps. It's exactly the same kind of language that we see teachers describing pupils as. And then we see this kind of thing here, which is, uh, this is the lass who's uh, looking for a job, uh, at a leisure centre, and then she works at a leisure centre, she wants another one, and her next post was sitting outside the leisure centre waiting for it to open, this place is a shithole I need out. And we see teachers making these kind of comments all the time. I had a parent complain about infant teachers, where the infant teachers were complaining about the head teacher, and they were saying, look what the bitch has made us do today, and she was, they were doing it every night, and they had little drawings of uh, the gun at the head teacher's head. And here we can see, I woke up late for work, decided to have a leisurely breakfast before leaving the house, they're lucky to have me. That's a friend of uh, somebody who works in our office. How do the colleagues feel? They'll be friends on, on Facebook, won't they? And so then we get onto, uh, this must be, um, you know this? Yeah. Lynn Hong? And now I was following her before this happened, and cracking, just fantastic links about uh, modern languages and all that sort of stuff. And then she, she tweeted something which was along the lines of, 
Uh, next lesson is going to be fireworks, and she mentioned some of the kind of conditions that some of the kids had, and that was perceived to be a very negative comment, and, and probably was, if it had been my child. And so the whole thing kind of kicked off, and, and then there was a blanket ban across the authority. Equally so, we then get over to Facebook here, and these are real teachers' accounts, and what we can see is, is over on this side, there's some debate actually about whether I should hide the pictures or not, and we've got our female teacher here whose favourite TV programmes are Sex and the City and Desperate Housewives, where I come from, that means that she's up for it. <laughs> Why would, you, why would you do that? Why would you put that stuff there and then try and teach kids or meet parents? Mm -hmm. And then over here we've got uh, a teacher who um, describes uh, political views that are all a bunch of wankers and the religious views Church of England did it in a Catholic school and they said, well, what do you expect? The interesting thing about this is, and in the last month I've had it happen four times, is the teacher who that belongs to has finally come into my radar and they've said they didn't put that up there their daughter put it up and I've had other examples of husband did it and other child did it and it's this sudden denial of the realisation that that is inappropriate and telling me I should stop using it in my presentation, should I? They'd already shared it with 550 million people and so then we get over here, there's Bernardo's they weren't happy about that let me just move on because I'm going to get us to our end these are Bluetooth names of teachers who come to courses and don't realise I'm going to do a Bluetooth search <laughs> Uh, I lied about one and God was a police officer. <laughs> Go back to your work and do a Bluetooth search so that you can see the kinds of people that you're working with. Uh, Russell Brand's bitch was last week, which I thought was quite nice. Thunderpants was yesterday. Yesterday morning. And then, so let's move on because we are going to finish. Uh, those are two teachers and a doctor who were tagged by their friends. This one here didn't even start teaching. She just got a teaching qualification and she was struck off for wearing a... Struck off. Had a... Uh, permit re uh, revised um, for wearing a pants hat and drinking beer. The other side of this is that we need society to grow up, don't we? And get a bit more mature about this. You should be allowed to drink beer. What I'm saying is until it does um, grow up, we need to manage our risks. So we've got all those things there, but I'm going to get this down here. You do need to have one of these. How are you going to deal with that? You don't have to read it. All you need to know is, is, that, is it an adult? Is it a child? Is it deliberate? Is it accidental? What are you going to do? What I can tell you is, is that I've done this with the local authority. Every time we have an event, we have to change it because it doesn't quite work out. When do you tell the police? When do you tell your superior to the local authority that the wider school board? That's just lovely. That's just the whole thing about uh, sending out locations about where you are because insurance companies now are not paying out if they can prove that you told people that you weren't going to be there. And so here's our guidance. Separate your personal from professional. Protect your information. Think about your profile picture. Think about what you're publishing. Be professional. We were always professional, right from before digital times. If I was in the pub and kids or parents came in the pub, I told my mates we're moving on. Didn't matter whether I was having half a lager or a coke. That's what we do. You just have a professional image. Protect your image, make sure people don't tag you, talk to your friends and contacts, children are not online friends. And so we need to model behaviour, we need effective practice that goes along with our policies. And we need relevant training, that's what this is, and responsible technical support. And this is just a lovely little bit. My daughter's got a job. She works at a weekend, and she is demonstrating uh, the Xbox Connect. And we talk so much about preparing kids for jobs that didn't exist yet. That didn't exist last summer. And she gets sixty pounds a day for dancing in Comet and Asda. I know. So if you take nothing else away from this, understand this: that there are no such things as private, and nothing can be deleted. I do a nice little activity with Wayback Machine where you can find all of my websites from. I've, been, I've had websites since 95, and most of the pages are still there. We're not looking at that. My name is Simon Finch. You can follow me on Twitter as SimFin, or as Northern Grid, or as the Learn Platform Network, or as the NEN. And if you want to see my safety uh, favorites uh, and bookmarks, you can see them on Delicious. And you can email me if you've got anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And your